Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Garden of Grace Devotion. My name is Pastor Katie, and I am one of the pastors at Trinity Lutheran Church in Lilburn, Georgia. Today, I want to talk to you about a sign that I recently came across. I have it here with me, and it says these words. It says, listen and silent have the same letters. And then it says, coincidence? What do you think? Is it a coincidence that listen and silent have the very same letters? I came across this sign a couple weeks ago and it keeps coming to mind. I keep thinking about it. Listen and silent have the same letters. I'd never really realized it or thought about it before. Have you? that listen and silent have the same letters. They're just organized a bit differently. And the more I think about it, the more sense it makes to me. When I sit back and I think about the times when I have felt as though someone is really listening to me, times when I've really felt heard, I can see it. The times when I've felt the most heard have in large part been when the other person is silent. Silent, but not sleeping, that's different. Silent, yet engaged. And I don't know about you, but I find that there are different types of silent. There's silence in speech, there's silence in thought, and there's silence in activity among others. For example, I can be physically quiet, yet I'm still thinking about so many things that I'm not actually silent. I'm not really listening. There are also other times when I may be silent with my mouth, but I'm not really listening because I'm doing a bunch of other things. I'm multitasking, doing several things at once, which, which can be a good thing a lot of times, but sometimes, when it's time to really listen, it can take away from the silence, the real silence and the real listening. I have this friend, for example. I have this friend who is a wonderful listener. Amidst the busyness of life, I don't get to see her all that often, but when I do, when she asks me about my day or how things have been going, as I respond, as I respond, she listens so well. She doesn't have her phone in her hand. She's not busy with a hundred different things. When we have an intentional conversation, she stops what she's doing, makes eye contact with me and she listens. She is silent, not only with her words, but with her actions. And sometimes someone else or something pops up that needs her attention. And so she diverts her attention. When she's finished, she then returns to the silence of her attention with her mouth and her body language. Her silence is only broken by head nods and an occasional question or affirmation or curiosity. She doesn't interrupt me with her own agenda. She is silent. She patiently listens and I consistently felt, feel heard when she does offer feedback. And when she does offer feedback, it's related to what I've been talking about because she's been listening to what I've had to say. Silence and listen. They have the same amount of letters. Perhaps it's not a coincidence at all. As a wife, and a mom and a pastor and a friend and a neighbor. Oftentimes, I have to multitask in order to get things done. I mean, there are only so many hours in the day, right? It is important for me to stop sometimes though, to stop amidst the busyness and to be silent, to give my full attention and listen. And if I'm completely honest, this is probably something that I have a much easier time doing at work rather than at home. 
but when it's time for me to listen, to really listen wherever I am, I want to pay more attention to being silent. Not just with my words, but with my thoughts and my actions. Along these lines, I'd like to highlight this passage from Proverbs chapter 17, verses 27 and 28. It reads, The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint, and whoever has understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent, and discerning if they hold their tongues. Sometimes, the very thing that keeps me from listening well is my own desire to be heard. Sometimes, when I'm listening, depending on the topic and how passionate I am about it, I may feel a strong desire to try to insert my own knowledge or opinion. It is in these moments that I am least likely to listen. The passage from Proverbs is interesting though. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint, it says. They just don't go letting their words fly all over the place. My college cross country coach is this way. He doesn't waste words. When he speaks though, you listen. And when others speak, he listens. That way everyone is heard. Of course, he's not perfect. None of us are, and that isn't always the case, but fairly consistently. He uses his words carefully. And that makes sense. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint. The passage from Proverbs then goes on to say, that the one who has understanding is even-tempered. That makes a lot of sense to me, as I am the best at listening to others when I am feeling grounded and calm, when I am even-tempered. When I am even-tempered, I am much more able to be silent and to listen. So listen and silent have the same letters the very same letters, it's true. Of course, we learn in other parts of scripture that there is a time to speak and a time to keep silent. There's much to say about the time to speak, but just for today, we're gonna focus on what it looks like to be silent and to listen. So can you think of the last time that you were totally silent and you listened with your whole self to what another person has to say. For the next week, with help from God, I'm going to try this at least daily. I'm going to try to be totally silent and listen. I wonder if you wanna try something like that too. Are there certain times or situations when it's easier for you to be silent? and to listen? Are there certain situations where it doesn't come as naturally? This week, the twist to the challenge for me is that I will be with my family, where I think I may be less likely to do this. As a pastor, I think I am more likely to be completely silent as I sit with others at church. So often at home, there's so much to do that I'm less likely to sit down and offer undivided attention. This next week will be a good week to practice though. To practice this with humans, then to continue to practice this with God through prayer. So when is the last time? When is the last time you were totally silent and listened with your whole self to what another person had to say. If I asked you the same question tomorrow, would your answer be at least one more than it was today? May the Lord be with us and grant us peace on our journey. 
as we seek to discern when to be silent and when to speak, as God helps us learn to continue to listen